Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Binding of Isaac Repentance. Today, I'm thinking we do another challenge. You know, we got to keep going down the list. It's been a hot minute. Let's do a let's do a pay to play. We're gonna take break on speed. Speed seems like a lot of work. I'm gonna be honest. We got GZ0HY44A. All right, pay to play. Do I have to pay to go into different rooms? Okay, it's not a speed run. I I think I'm just supposed to pay to go into different rooms. That is interesting. Okay, so we need like, we need a source of money, I guess is my like immediate thought. We, we need some way, ow, we need some way to receive money other than taking damage. Okay, I mean, it's not bad so far. Apparently the curse room doesn't exist. Oh, what? Okay, I was just gonna rub my face on the wall and say, wow, this doesn't work. But I guess it works, okay. Okay, that sucks. That's... That's mega rough. And of course, this is useless because I'm just gonna lose it. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so money equals power. I, just, I don't even know how to describe this. I don't know where to start, honestly. Just, you want money, but you need money to spend it, you know? But you need it for damage. It's, it's gonna be an interesting run. I mean, immediately starting off, I am feeling a little bit of lag. So honestly, I might just restart the run and uh, restart the episode. Jumper cables, that's not that good, no. Okay, you know, real quick, let me just close some applications. I do have like some open notepads and Excel spreadsheets and stuff that I guess I could close. There we go. I might speed it up a little bit. Oh. So, we're definitely going to want to shoot, like, every poop. Petrified poop would be fantastic. You know what's not fantastic? Tears down pill. But hey, what are you going to do? So yeah, it, it's been a couple days since I've recorded an episode. We, we pre-recorded a, a couple, so I've been uh, kind of just living off of those, I guess you could say. What is, what is new with me? Uh, the co-op that I've been talking about with the interview that I thought went fantastic, apparently I didn't get it. I mean, not to sound egotistical, but honestly, I have no idea how I didn't. It seemed like we were a perfect match, you know? If, if we were on Tinder, we both would have swiped right. I had what they were looking for, but I guess... I don't know, I guess someone just had it. Someone had more of what they were looking for. I don't know. They, they sent me an email that said, Hey, we appreciate everything, you know, your, your model looks good, we enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, feel free to contact us in the future with other models because they like to see my work. Maybe that was just them being, being polite. I have no clue. But uh, I plan on giving them, like, a follow-up email that's, you know, just politely asking, you know, what could I improve for, for the sake of future employers? What, what could I have done differently in order to better impress them, you know? It's just a polite follow-up of, like, what the heck did I do wrong, you know? Obviously said politely. I wouldn't be rude about it. Just say, hey, yo, why didn't you pick me, bro? I was literally perfect. Like, you know, I'm not gonna be that guy. Uh, sure, we'll take Broken Magnet. Does it go through rocks? No, apparently not. Uh, heck it, we'll go in the curse room. So, I mean, the run's not bad. It's just spooky. You know, it's spooky how, how unique it is. Like, I'm assuming I want to try to keep equal money. Like, I want to... I never want to go down. Okay. I never want to go down in money. And I'm only at, like, 39 cents when I started at 50. Which is not good. I, I started with 50 and now I'm at 40, so damage is lower. The amount of rooms I can go into is lower. Uh, apparently, we have to beat Isaac this run. Wait, that means I have to make it... Okay, I have to make it all the way... Not like all, all the way, but I have to make it all the way. That's gonna be painful. All right. I mean, one thing they could have done to this run to make it a lot worse would be make it so that like every time I leave a room, I have to pay to go back. Like I have to pay to go backtracking. I remember there was some curse room challenge that we did where every room's a curse room. You know, you gotta take damage in order to, to go back. And I think you started with like 12 red hearts or something. That was an interesting run. Easy, but it was interesting. But, uh... 
Yeah, so at least they didn't do that because that would make it a lot worse. I'm not planning on getting a lot of blue hearts and I can't afford any of those. I guess we'll just keep schmoving. No sense in wasting a bomb here. But yeah, no, I, I plan on continuing my, my 3D modeling legacy, you know? I plan on uploading everything that I make onto YouTube. You know, any big projects. If I'm just following a tutorial to like learn a skill or something, I'm not gonna post that on YouTube. But if I ever make like any, any individual product, something unique, something not on the internet previously, then of course I'll post them. You know, I'm, just, it, I'm working on it. I'm working hard on it, so might as well get some free content out of it, right? I don't know. I'm, I'm debating like making animations into like YouTube shorts. Like it's super easy to upload things in portrait mode because I can just tell it to render in portrait mode, you know? Lots of blue hearts. That's nice. Uh, Kind of stinks that I already took damage from that spider when I really should not have. A little bit rough, but should be fine. Uh, yeah, what else is new? I know there was something. I had something on my mind. This this is one of the moments, one of the many, many moments where I regret not having like a notepad open that tells me what I was thinking about. Because I was thinking about something before I got here. I mean, I'm always thinking about something, but I was thinking about something specific, something to talk about, something to, to use as a conversation starter and pointer. I feel like this happens every episode at this point. I'm sure I'll think of it as soon as I stop recording. Then I'll record a second Isaac episode. Uh, what the heck is- I've never seen this before. Is that a pussy eyeball? Sty, damage and range up. I can't even see it. Okay, it's just a really stuffy eye. Maybe that's what it is? Sty, stuffy eye? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Probably should- oh, I really should have used that heckin' blood donation machine. We had so much health. Well, that's a pain. Alright, cool. I could use a lot more money. Uh, we're only at 35 cents, so we are down 15, which is not good. Uh, I don't know. I guess one thing I kind of want to talk about... I, I, I don't expect many people to see this episode, so I'm completely fine talking about it. I might have accidentally eaten a frying pan. Now you might be thinking, Ayo Kerr, what the heck does that mean? It it means that my, uh, you know, long story short, Tum Tum Angie ingested frying pan. Now you might be wondering how the heck that happens. Well, when I, when I first moved in, I got like a frying pan, right? I, I got a frying pan from like the dollar store, so it was like three bucks. It was a non-stick frying pan. You know, one of the one of the types with like a, a black shiny surface. You know, you cook eggs on it and it just washes off. You don't you don't need to use soap or anything. Obviously, you will use soap, but you don't need to scrub it. You know, it's a non-stick surface. Well, uh, apparently, I didn't realize this. Apparently, uh, since it's from the dollar store, it is extremely weak to like intense heats. Like, if you have a very good frying pan, if you have like a a fancy frying pan you got like Canadian Tire or some other home hardware or something, then it's good at high heats. It, this one's good, does the job, non-stick and everything, but apparently at high heats it melts. So, you know, I made grilled cheese this morning. I was hungry, I made grilled cheese, so I took butter, I, I took the butter, I put it on the pan, let the butter melt, and then I, you know, put the bread on. I put the bread on it and thought, okay, should be fine. And then I, I cooked it, it was completely fine, and it smoked a little bit. It smoked a little bit, had a funky smell. I was assuming it's just because there was some kind of like, some kind of protection layer that was on the frying pan when you buy it, you know? Like that that's common, some kind of protective layer for when it's in stores to like not collect dust kind of thing. And usually they make it out of edible material, just makes your first food taste a little weird. And I was like, okay, fine, whatever. A little, little bit of smoke never hurt nobody, you know? It's a grilled cheese. And so I, I, I see the grilled cheese and it's a little black on the bottom. Now, you know, I'm a professional. I, I, I know what's what's edible and what's not. And I saw a little bit of black and it's like, fine, whatever. So I, I just took my knife. I took my knife that I cut the grilled cheese with and I just like, you know, scraped the black off like you would in a restaurant. Fun fact, if your toast ever looks slightly burnt, it's because it was really burnt and they just scraped it off with a knife. 
But, uh, you know, just, just pro tips from Pro Chef over here. Yeah, so I, I ate the grilled cheese and it, it tasted a little funky. And afterwards, I did the dishes. I, I did the dishes. You know, the second the second grilled cheese was completely fine. I, I realized it was a little hot because it was like sizzling the butter a little bit too fast, wasn't cooking the cheese enough in the middle. So I, uh, the, the second one was completely fine. Tasted fantastic, you know, put it with some, uh, some ketchup. It was delicious. I loved it. But the first one, I, I regretted eating a little bit. And so when I went to do the dishes afterwards, I realized, oh, there's like a part of the protective layer. Like, you know how I said there was like the black shiny? There, there was like the black shiny layer for nonsticks. Well, part of that was like bubbly. Part, part of that was like bubbly. So that means that I like melted part of the bottom of the pan onto the grilled cheese. And apparently I ate it. So, you know, sometimes how you have like a hot dog or something, if you if you have a little bit of like a half burp or, you know, you breathe a little bit hard, you can taste it. You can taste the hot dog even a couple hours later. Yeah, I can taste frying pan. So that's 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 my main story of the day is I accidentally ate a frying pan. I mean, the grilled cheese delicious. I love grilled cheese. Don't get me wrong. I would just not recommend dipping your grilled cheese in a molten frying pan, you know? It, it, it starts to taste a little weird. I've tried a couple things to get the taste out of my mouth. It, it's one of those feelings where it's like you want to throw up at, throw up after, right? Like, it, it's a gross taste, your body's rejecting it. But, like, the thing is, I don't throw up. Because I, I lack many hum common human feelings, you know? Mark Zuckerberg over here, I'm basically a robot. So, like, I, I lack the feeling of needing to throw up, but I, I can feel that my body wants to, but like, obviously I don't want to, because, you know, no one enjoys throwing up. No one enjoys it. If someone says they do enjoy it, first of all, call a doctor. Second of all, they're heckin' weird. But, uh, yeah. So I've, I've tried a couple different things to get the taste out of my mouth. It, it's not like always in my mouth. It's only when I take like a super deep breath or have like a mini burp. So, you know, I, I made some hot cocoa. It was delicious. Put a little bit of extra chocolate in it for flavor. You know, chocolate powder. It's not like I'm I'm not rich. I don't make it with actual chocolate. But you know what I mean. So I made some hot cocoa. That was nice. Didn't really change it, you know. Brushed my teeth three times. Didn't really change it. So I don't know. I guess I'd have to, like... I'd have to get, like, a, a piece of gum, you know? Gotta get some of that minty fresh gum and just s chew it up and swallow it. And then just, like, do a couple jumping jacks to get that to get that minty flavor around, you know? Wow, these buttons are not worth it. I was hoping one of them would give us some money. Because, I mean, this, this run isn't that bad so far. It's just a little rough, you know? It's, it's, it's got a little bit of scruff on the edges. It's mainly that tears down. If we didn't take that tears down pill, this would have been so much better. We're at 25 cents. We're officially half of what we started at. Which means our damage is lowered. Uh, you know, d damage is low. We can only go into 25 more rooms at our, at our current state. Uh, so that's something I'm gonna have to start worrying about soon. These frames are really explosive. Sometimes it just, you know, sometimes it just explodes. I guess my computer has been on for a while. It was on sleep mode, though. It's not like I'm currently rendering anything. It actually seems like it lags whenever I receive a Discord notification. Because apparently someone's, like, spamming me right now on Discord. I've got four notifications. Which I know for some people that's like absolutely nothing. You know, females with Snapchat know what it's like to have spam. But I mean, it's not that bad. Uh, so hopefully, you know, whatever whatever's causing the lag will temporarily halt until I can deal with it personally. Oh, what else is new? What, what else is something new? I, I've been, I guess I can talk about what I've been working on in Blender. You know, obviously I'm not going to show any not done projects until they're done. 
but I, I recently took over a project where I wanted to I wanted to test how good my overall knowledge with uh, the 3D modeling is, not just like in a specific subject, but just in general. So basically I gave myself a big project and I wanted to see if I could learn the skills and see if I could figure out like what was missing, you know? What's up, Karen Queen? And so I just wanted to figure out I wanted to see if I could figure out how to figure out, basically. You know, see if I was at the point where I don't need tutorials. Now, obviously, as it happens with anything, you know, you still you still look up on Google, like, where the heck is this setting, you know? I know there's something here. I've done it in the past. Where the heck is it? Also, this sucks. Here, Carrying Queen, take a bomb. That took longer than expected. But yeah, so the the project was basically I wanted to create a meteor. I wanted to create a meteor. I wanted to set it on fire like it was falling from the atmosphere. I wanted to hit the ground and then I wanted it to leave a crater with a dust cloud afterwards. You know, just a simple animation, nice and simple. I made the meteor, I set it on fire, and then I realized that I had never actually made something a solid object before. You know, it existed, but it was it was like a ghost. Like, a good way to think about it is, you know in, like, video games how you'll find, like, an exploit? Like, a wall you can walk through when you're not supposed to, right? That's because that wall is technically not... Well, the, the professional term is a rigid body, as I've learned. It's not a rigid body. It was just... It's just a mesh, is what you would call it. It's an empty mesh where it exists. It's just not physically there. You can see it, but it's not there. It's confusing. So I, I followed a, a couple tutorials, I made physical meshes, and that, or I made rigid bodies. And that brought me into a whole branch of Blender that I didn't even know existed. I guess I knew it existed, I just never knew, never understood it. And now I like completely understand it. Where it is... Have you ever been like scrolling on YouTube shorts or TikToks or, you know, other short videos and you'll see like... Things that are obviously 3D rendered? but like or like 3d models but it's like you know i've seen one where it was machines making like the xbox logo in like a factory or something or there was like a circle and you know there was a there was like a saw blade that cut it open into the x and revealed the glowy middle kind of thing i found out that that's just like a super duper popular thing and also it's honestly super fun it, it is super fun to mess with like rigid bodies like the, the most simple form is just like get an object throw it at a cube and then have the cube move afterwards that, that's the most simple form and it's honestly just like super fun so you know there, there's different ways you can do it you can change the physics of the object touching the object or you could change the physics of the object being touched you know, you can make it bouncy, you can make it rigid, you can make it have friction, you can make it have no friction, no gravity, etc. It's just like super duper cool messing with that kind of stuff because, you know, that's how you could make physics engines. You know, if you wanna, if you wanna, like maybe you have a job or something and you have to hit a building with a wrecking ball, you know? You can create that building and you can hit it with a wrecking ball and get like an emulation, I guess you could call it, of how it would happen in real life. You know, obviously approximate, you can't, you can't get every single crumbling feature perfect. You're, you're not gonna get every fractoid flawless, but you know, it's still really cool. So I don't know, honestly I might, that, that's maybe what I'll like invest more time into, is like learning how to make rigid body animations so, I don't know, you might be seeing more videos of that. I, I think it's super cool. I'm hoping that, you know, YouTube videos would think it's super cool, whether I upload it as like a short, upload it as a video, or I don't know. Maybe I'll just become like a 3D modeling channel. You know, maybe I'll start making tutorials for Blender. Although I highly doubt, I, I highly doubt that's gonna happen, because, you know, other people know better than me. I mean, the one thing is I feel like YouTube People get too comfortable with old tutorials. Like, something that happens very often for me is there will be like a tutorial. Someone will make a tutorial. You know, usually some Indian guy four years ago will make a tutorial. But it's like super outdated and half the things don't work. 
but like, you know, anyone who's willing to search up a tutorial, anyone who's willing to search up a tutorial is willing to also spend, you know, 10 minutes to fix anything that doesn't work. Like, you know, you say you're doing a drawing tutorial and, you know, they have a color palette that you don't have, you know? They, they can they can use hex codes and for some reason it doesn't show up for you. So I think what, what YouTube should have, okay, that was a big explosion. What YouTube should have is I think that YouTube should like, not redo, but like there should be more inspiration to recreate old tutorials. Also, heck the bloat, Jesus. Take some flipping bombs, man. He's not taking enough bombs. I can't hit him. He's, it's the flipping bloat. This guy sucks. Can't do anything. I can't get close to him. He's got poison clouds and he jumps. Come on. I, I hate the, I hate this guy. We, our health was doing so good. We were doing so good, you know, the run was popping. Honestly, don't think that the run would have made it anyways, because our money is, we don't have enough money to make it through the next couple floors. But you know, heck that guy. Uh, HP, yes. Uh, White Heart, not yet. Satanic Bible? I mean, yeah, I like Satanic Bible. It's just money is our number one issue. If we came up, if we came across like a quarter or something, I'd have to take it. We'll take Satanic Bible. Get some black hearts going. Uh, I guess we just have to go. We we can't adventure. We we can't look around. We don't have the money. We need to make it through three floors. No. Four floors, because we also have to do. Okay. Well, this is interesting then. This is a very interesting run. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, this run kinda sucks. We got a whole bunch of damage, but we didn't get anything money-wise. We we didn't get a quarter, like I feel like you need like a counterfeit penny or a wooden nickel or I don't know, really anything just that just gives you a crap ton of money. We we didn't get any money items this run. And I feel like that's super important. Like, I, I feel like you need to, like, get an early shop on the first floor and it needs to have some kind of money item on it or else you're just hecked, you know? You gotta make investments. Which is what I feel like this entire run's about. I, I feel like it's about making investments and taking the right opportunities, just like most Isaac runs, but we just didn't get any opportunities. Which is a bit painful. I mean, who knows? We could still get, like, a, a dime or a nickel or something from this room. Which would be super cool. Didn't. Cool. Alright. Uh, I'm saving the world card for... I don't know, I guess... I guess I'm saving the world card for, like... The womb. We're saving the world card for the womb. Just because those floors are massive. And there is zero point to exploring them. There is zero point to exploring them. And so... Ow. What the... Since when did they have tentacles? I thought they only shot. I guess that's what happens when you take forever. Yeah, save it for the womb, save it for the cathedral. That's the that's the floor. Forgot his name. Because I feel like we need to at this point. Give me some money, baby. Wait, does that give... Wait, did that just take five? We were at eight cents. Did it drop it outside the door? It must have dropped it outside the door, right? It did... Where did the money go? We were at five, and then we came through here, and then we're at... Five still, even though it made two pick up money noises. Are curse rooms cursed? Are curse rooms cursed? What just happened? Where'd all that money go? There was so much money outside the door. Like at least two cents. <laughs> and I'm 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 a poor college student, trust me, I know how far two cents can go. Okay, well that's interesting. For some reason sometimes I just don't pick up money. That's no good. Uh, I mean, deck of cards, honest. Oh, wait, what? I can't go back. You can pay to go into challenge rooms, but you can't pay to get back into them once you've left. That sucks. Tinted rock. Sure. I mean, we'll go in the arcade. Could have a blood donation machine. Okay. Well, we have to play with it because we need money. We just straight up need money. Wait, that took three cents and gave us two. Wait a minute. So we're at six. We take damage. That took away two, because now we're at four and it only gave one. What? 
So every time I take damage, I l drop money. I drop money and it gives us half of it. It gives us the same amount of money back minus one. What the f Okay. So basically you really don't want to take damage on this run. Okay. I mean, I guess I have been hit like what 20 times now. So that actually makes sense how we've lost so much money. It's not because we've entered rooms. It's because I've been really stupid and took damage 18 times on the flippin' bloat fight. Okay. Well, now we know for next time. Because obviously this run's not going to make it. I mean, should I just restart now? I, I feel like I should just restart now. Just because I know this run's not going to be able to make it to the cathedral. I think that's honestly just the best bet. Yeah, heck it is. It's only 23 minutes in. You know, our usual our usual rule is 30. Hierophant. Nah, if it was money, I'd go for it. Alright, let's do it. Holding R. First time I've ever done that. 9Z6ZEWDV. That's the first time I've ever held R. Doesn't feel good, doesn't feel bad. I don't know, I'm just here. So, definitely don't want to go in any curse rooms. Unless I've got some kind of infinite money strategy, don't want to go in curse rooms because it costs two cents, which is two rooms. Which, if you go into every curse room on, like, the entire run, which is, like, nine floors, then you're out 18 cents, which is a lot of money. That is a lot of money. And also, don't forget, like, say... Say you drop four cents from leaving the curse room, you don't go back into the curse room, so you're down f th four. You're, you're still down four cents. So you do not want to go in the curse room, because you will lose minimum three to four cents. I don't know the exact number because I'm way too lazy. Uh, the map? See, this is what I talk about when I say investments. If I have the map, I know where I'm going every floor. I know where I'm going, and say there's eight floors. If that, if that saves me going the wrong way for two rooms each floor, then that's worth it. Yes, okay. So, if that saves me going the wrong way for two floors, then that's worth it. Or not four floors, two floors, eight floors. Long story short, it's worth it. Uh, okay, so I guess let's fight the boss. Hopefully not take any damage, because heck damage. So this is interesting. It actually gives, like, taking damage a whole new meaning, you know? Makes it so you don't want to take damage one, so you don't die, and two, so you don't lose your money. Which is just real life in a nutshell, you know? That's why you don't want to die in real life. How, how are you going to make money? You know, how are, how are you going to pay your taxes and fall into the capitalist trap? Alright. Probably shouldn't have taken damage there, but it's fine. I, I usually allow myself to get hit by Beelzebub once. Because heck that guy. Uh, pajamas is great. That's a lot of HP. Perfect. All right, next floor. 30 cents. We are down low. We're, we're a little bit down bad, but we know where we're going, which can save us a lot of money in the long run. And so I'm hoping that all these enemies are just going to be pushovers, you know, just let me kill them. That'd be nice. Going to try to not take damage. Okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bombs are always nice. I don't know. I haven't really been looking for secret rooms. I mean, honestly, last run, I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I didn't look for secret rooms, because we needed those bombs for the bloat. But, I mean, that's when it gets confusing, because, like, what if... What if you find a secret room, and the secret room has, like, you know, five dimes in it or something? What if it gives you 50 cents? Because unless you're, like, you know, obsessed with Gucci, then you'll have enough money to make it to the end of the run. Obviously. So... You know. Uh, so we're just gonna hopefully stay around 30 cents. That's my goal, is just stick around 30. If we can if we can end every floor with 30, we should be fine. That okay. I, okay, dude. Well there you go, two cents for no reason. Sick. Ragman, not good, but our damage is decent, so I'm hoping he's gonna be a lot easier than normal. We do have good damage. Kill the spider, kill the spider, kill the spider, kill the spider. Ow. Okay, yeah, Ragman sucks. I hate Ragman. I hate fighting Ragman. Ragman's just a pain in the batuckus to fight. Keep shooting the head. Perfect. One more. There we go. 
HP, money, deal with the devil, all right. Uh, would I rather deal with the devil or deal with the angel? Doesn't really matter, honestly. We just need damage and money. What do we got? Guppy's hairball. Not exactly worth it, in my opinion. All right, I guess we go next floor. Cool. Oh, this is this is a heckin' spooky run. I mean, I guess technically it is. But Jesus, this is. Oh, it's an XL. Is that a good or a bad thing? Oh, I'm assuming the boss fight's gonna be at the very top right. So I'm hoping that this saves us a crap ton of like money for for fighting an XL floor. So here's a tinted rock, money, blue heart. I guess I'll take it. I mean, even though money is our number one issue right now, it, it still is important to stay alive, get deals with the devils, you know, deals with the angels, whatever it takes. Whatever allows you to get money but also not die, you know? Which once again, honestly, this, this run is very, very relatable to real life. It's kind of like the two things that people care about most, you know? Money and not dying. I mean, it depends on the person. Some of us, you know, college students such as myself, it's mainly just to get money. You know, we don't really, we don't really care if we have to get hit by a bus to pay for schooling as long as we can pay for schooling, you know? Which did almost happen to me. I mean, I didn't get, I didn't almost get hit by a bus. I almost got hit by like a speeding car. But it's okay, because I punched out their driver's side window. But that's, that's a story for another day, you know? Long story short, I've got good reaction speeds. Although it was kind of annoying because, you know, I totally would have loved to get hit by them so I could make money from a lawsuit or something, you know? Some kind of monetary compensation for my injuries. I don't know, that brings to light like an interesting question that I always find the most interesting answers to. It's like, if you were to lose a body part for money, what would it be? Ooh, that's nice. Because a lot of people say, like, you know, I'd, I'd lose an organ. I'd rather lose an organ than anything else. In which case, you know, fair. Good answer. Good answer. What else? I mean, like, some people would say, like, a toe. Like, honestly, you know, I use my pinky toe a lot, but you know what? what what's, what's the toe you use less? Or least? Like, probably your ring finger toe, so one away from your pinky? Or, I guess, your ring toe, not ring finger toe? Oh, dice room, what do you got? Two. Plus one to lowest stat. Tears up? Speed? Tears up. Let's go. That's fat. Uh, yeah, we'll take a bomb. Don't want to reroll that. Uh, straight to ye old boss fight, hopefully. So yeah, like, I, I don't know. Like, if I were to lose a, if I were to lose a body part, what would I want to lose for money? Like, obviously, it depends how much money. I don't know. I, I guess my best answer would probably be, like, and obviously you can't say like, you know, a piece of hair. You, you can't lose hair. Let's let's just say so that people don't use the hair cop out answer. Uh, if someone takes it, it's an evil scientist, they make a clone of you, and then they kidnap and kidnap and kill you, and they take over your life and kill your parents. There you go. Unless you don't like your parents, in which case they're super nice to your parents. There you go. <laughs> that's that, that's the circumstance that we live in these days. You know, I'd, I'd probably say, like, a ring toe. And honestly, I'd probably lose, like, a ring toe for... What's the minimum I'd go for? Like, maybe, maybe like, $5,000. You know, I'd, I'd say that's a decent amount. $5,000. That'll let you... That'll get you enough rent for, like, half a year, depending on where you live. Obviously, it depends on where you live, but... You know, I'd, I'd say 5k for a ring toe's not bad. I'd probably go lower if it were an actual... If it were an actual circumstance, I'd probably actually go for it. Just because, you know, money do be a thing that we're all pretty desperate for these days. This isn't the boss fight? God dang. You know, what are you? The stars card. You son of a... <sighs> this wasn't the boss fight. That was the shop. Okay, so this has to be the boss fight. It's gotta be up here. There's no way it's that close to spawn. If it's that close to spawn and I missed out on it... And lost like how many cents would I have lost like 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 cents plus the three that I spent on the card just like hoping for something to give me money lost out on 12 cents 
because I guess I guess my god gamer intuition failed me once again. It's never failed me before. It literally has a flawless ratio in everything I do in life, you know? Life is like a video game. I don't know. Someone someone did have a pretty cool idea for for a homework assignment that I had. Wait. What's the boss? Wait, what? Oh, because it's an Excel. It's an Excel force, so the two boss fights are together. That doesn't help me at all on judging where the boss fights are. But it's an Excel floor, so the two boss fights are like one after another. Okay, that's that's reasonable. Yeah. Okay, that shouldn't have hit me. Fair. Yeah, no, I am... I, I don't think we're going to be able to win this run either. This is an interesting challenge. It's an actually challenging challenge. But I feel like a lot of it depends on luck, you know? Like, sure, I kind of hecked the run over a little bit by getting the map, but, like, it was an investment. If anything was going to get us to finish the run easier, or with a lot more money, it was going to be the map. Like, I, I would have also paid 15 cents for the compass, I'm going to be honest. Anything to help us go the right direction would have been nice. I mean, the map we spent 15 cents on, it kind of cost us 12 cents by making us go the wrong way. So, you know, if the run went all the way, it would have been a worthy investment. It looks like a bad investment because we're not going to go all the way. But what are you going to do? I mean, you never know. We could still get like a deal with the devil and get uh, like the quarter or something. Okay, that's just unlucky. Yeah, we, we could still get the quarter from, like, a deal with the devil. Obviously, I'd take that, you know. Money's kind of more important than HP. Especially because we're poor. Twelve cents. That's at least enough for one more floor. So, deal with the devils are kind of, like, our only hope. Just hoping that we can get a quarter. I don't know. Maybe we'll find a secret room accidentally from killing an explosive enemy and we'll get, like, some kind of... I don't know, what's it called? Head of the Keeper, maybe? Couldn't tell you. Alright. These guys are regenerating way too quick. Try to take out some of these beads, balls, I don't know what to call them. Sacks? I think they're called sacks. Don't know exactly. I don't know, still pretty new to the game. Oh right, I remember, I remember. You know how I said that there was a thing I forgot I wanted to talk about, but I really wanted to talk about? I remember it now. Let me let me say it real quick before I forget. I, I heard... I was watching like a Dota 2 video today, you know, I was just, it was popped up and recommended, I was doing the dishes at the time, so I figured, hey, sure, why not? Also, Angel Deal. Uh, so I figured, why not? And, nothing here for money, I guess I'll take the candle? Yeah, I'll take the candle. So, someone was talking about saying like, you know, I've put, I've put over 12,000 hours into Dota 2 over the last, since it came out, which has been like, what? Like, Eight years? Now, 12,000 hours. It, it doesn't seem like a lot of time. You know, for a gamer, that doesn't seem like a lot of time. That's just like, you know, you, you feel like that's not a lot. But when you put that into perspective, like if, if I, I did the math in my head, just while I was watching the video, I was doing the dishes, and I put the math into my head, you know? And I thought, 12,000 hours is a really, really long time. Like, if you think about it, how long is 12,000 hours? So 12,000 hours, say 20, 24 hours in a day. So half a day would be 12 hours, right? That's 12 times a thousand. That's a thousand half a days. That's 500 days straight that someone has done something. 500 days straight. Which is a long time. You know, it's, let's just say like the longest Twitch stream, I believe was like the, the longest straight Twitch stream with no sleeping, I think was like by one person was 10 days and they were doing World of Warcraft. Which honestly, I feel like that's just every World of Warcraft stream. But you know what I mean? Like 500, you've spent 500 days of your life. Say, say you're like some 13 year old playing Roblox for that long. That person spent over 10% of their life on Roblox. Including, like, sleeping, school, you know, being below the age of four, aka too young to play video games. You know? That's crazy. 
Like, I don't know when Dota 2 came out. I'm assuming that the person who said 12,000 hours has been playing it since, like, the day it came out. Like, I forget the exact math that I did. But... I don't know, that's, that's like at least eight hours a day every single day since it came out like nine years ago, you know? That's crazy. That's, that's a long time. And it just got me thinking, like, you know, I've for a long time, I've wanted for YouTube and Twitch, I've wanted to like commit to one game. I, I've wanted to commit to one game. I want to be, you know, the best at something, some game somewhere out there. I want to find the perfect game for me. And like back in the day, like, the two games that I think I could have played, like, for my entire life. Just focus on one game. Sure, do variety from time to time. But the one... The, the two games I feel like I could have done that for would have been Overwatch and Destiny 1. Those two games I could have put 10,000 hours into. It's like, that. that's just what I think about. It's like, you know, what is my 10,000 hour game? And that that's what I, that's what I think about constantly whenever I play anything is could I imagine myself playing this for 10 hours? Also, just taking fat money. Thank you, Telepills. So I don't know, that's, that's kind of like what I'm doing with uh, with my life, is what's what's things in real life, not just video games, but things in real life, what could I spend 10,000 hours doing? Because like, you know, for a job, for a job you spend eight hours a day, five days a week. After 10 years, that's gonna equate to like 10,000 hours. I don't know, I'm starting to make this sound like a TED talk, you know? What what can you do in 10,000 hours? Or what can you do for 10,000 hours? Start a TED talk about inspirational speeches and all that garbage. I don't know, I don't really watch TED talks, so I, I, I can't give a very good one. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure that people here have seen tic- not TikToks, TED talks. TED- TED TikToks? Is TED talks on TikTok? Probably. That's confusing. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll make an inspirational YouTube video about it. About what could I do for 10,000 hours. Because, like, honestly, like, maybe 3D modeling. I, I think I could spend 10,000 hours in the next 10 years. I, I could spend 1,000 hours each year for 10 years 3D modeling. It's super fun. Infinite possibilities. And... You know, it, it put, it's creative for your mind, keeps you busy, keeps, I mean, one thing that's super important for me is it keeps me distracted, keeps me out of my own head. Because that's a heckin' dangerous place to be. And so, yeah. What, what makes something a good 10,000 hour, good 10,000 hour job, objective, plan? Like, I think replayability, obviously. Like, you know, some video games have great replayability, some have terrible. And so, replayability, obviously important. For jobs, you know, no one wants to work at a call desk for 10,000 hours. No one wants to answer 911 calls for 10,000 hours. Although I'm sure many people have done it. Some people want to be doctors for 10,000 hours. Which is completely cool, you know? Like, the thing about being a doctor is there's a lot of different things. There's a lot of surprises, a lot of... Honestly, it's just surprises are the main thing. A lot of surprises, a lot of thinking. And, you know, the money doesn't hurt, too. And so... Uh, another dime. That is crazy. We're at 30 cents, so I did want to stay at 30 average. What is this? Uh... Maybe? No. Yes. I think I want this, right? I think I want Trisagion. Yeah, just because, I don't know, laser tears are always fun. La laser tears are always fun. That's the one. So, you know, my, my, my spirit in this run has been invigorated by two lucky dime drops. Uh, I've got a feeling the boss fight's gonna be... Oh, this is hard, because we're, like, right in the middle. It's either gonna be left or up. I think left. What's that? One, two, three, four rooms away. One, two, three, four, five rooms away. I think we'll go up. And just hope that this is the right direction. Uh, tinted rock right here, by the way. Boop. That's nice. Thank you. I'll wait for the spikes to go away, obviously. Don't want to lose any money for no reason. So yeah, I mean, this has honestly probably been like one of the best talking Isaac videos I've ever done. Because I haven't really talked about the run like at all. Obviously we ranted at the beginning a little bit about 
what the run is, but I mean, it's a new challenge. Of course you have to rant about it, that's content. Uh, Chariot, fantastic. I did take the right 50-50, you'll love to see it. So yeah, I mean, what what are other games that I could be my 10,000? Because I'm trying to think about it. I, I want to settle down on one game, because I know that that's how you make it on YouTube, make it on Twitch. You have to find one thing, and you have to make it, so like, if someone thinks about that thing, then they'll think of you. You know? Like, for, for Overwatch, there's a lot of good streamers. There's a lot of really popular streamers, like XQC. You know? XQC, I think he's still the number one Twitch streamer. So, XQC is Overwatch, you know? Uh, Warzone? Probably, like, Tim the Tatman or something, you know? So, like, what game, what thing could I be the guy for? Now, the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of things these days already have a guy or have a girl, you know? A lot of things already have a person, I guess is the proper thing. Or Apache helicopter, I don't know. Whatever people want to do these days, I'm just here. So, eventually, I need to find a niche, is I guess what you would call it. I need to find a niche, I need to find something that I can be the person for. I don't really know what that's gonna be. Like, I'd, I'd love to do Rust, but there's already so many people for it, you know? The thing that, like, applies to me, or the thing that I love about Rust videos, is the production quality that people put into them. Like, people make hour-long Rust movies with plots and stories and acting and graphics and stuff, and I love that. I love those videos. But I'm also way too lazy for all that editing, you know? I'm, I'm more of like a methodical kind of guy, you know? I like thinking about things, theories, efficiency, stuff like that. Angel deal, what do we got? Uh, the relic money, the Bible flight, or not money, this isn't money, that's blue hearts, probably, probably the relic. It's like every game that comes out, I, I have to think, could, could this be my 10,000 hour game? Could I be this guy? Could I be the guy for this, for this thing? And that's just the constant thought running in my head. You know, there, there are a lot of smaller games that don't have someone making... They don't have someone making content for it, but that's fair. Because, like, you know... If a game only has... A hundred players. Or a hundred people who have downloaded on Steam or whatever. Obviously, you're not gonna get a hundred people. You know? You're probably gonna get... If you're the person for that category, like, maximum, like, probably 60%. 60% of people would want to watch content for the game that they play. Because, you know, I'd, I'd say on, like, completely not statistically, by the way, but, like, 40% of people play the game themselves, they don't want to watch other people play it. Completely random statistic, number out of my butt, please don't take that. If IGN has said 40%, I'm not copywriting them, how about that? But yeah, so, you know, so, like, if a game has 100 people, maximum you could get would be, say, 60 people watching YouTube videos. Now, obviously, for games like Overwatch, for games like Call of Duty, if you become the guy, and I'm using the guy as a gender neutral term, it's just, I don't know, this, the guy sounds better. But if you wanna be the guy for, you know, super small indie company number one, 60 viewers. If you wanna be the guy for Overwatch, that's a potential of like, you know, millions of viewers. But of course, you know, there's also going to be millions of people trying to be the guy. So wow, our damage sucks. Jesus, I can't kill anything. Yeah, so it's about like finding the perfect ratio of players to viewers to streamers to content creators to everything. And all at the same time, something that people forget about is you can't just play a game because you're good at it. You can't just play a game because, you know, because people are willing to watch it. The most important thing, obviously, is the fact that you can enjoy it. And that's when the 10,000 hours comes into it. Obviously, some people can just enjoy having that many viewers, which is important, obviously. Do something you're proud of. Do something you're willing to put in front of other people and say, I made this. I, I did this and I am proud of it. You know? So that's, that's part of the 10,000 hour objective. Finding what you can do for 10,000 hours is, does it make you happy? Do you, 
do you feel fulfilled? Now, I know I'm getting a little bit philosophical about this. I'm mean, getting a little bit philosophical for... M Mr. Cursed, you're playing Isaac game with with a baby who shoot blood tears, you know? Blood laser tears. And stop being so stop being so flippin' philosophical. I also realized I was a bit closer to the microphone, so I guess this is an ASMR episode. But... Uh, two more floors to go. 16 cents. I think we can make it if I stop taking so much dumb, stupid damage, you know? I don't know. Like, there, there are some games I really, really love playing. Like, uh, Borderlands. I adore the Borderlands series. I love it so much. The thing about the Borderlands series is I've already played it, you know? I don't want to, I don't want to be the guy for something I've already put a lot of time into. I want to, one, one thing that really appeals to me is learning with your viewers. Like obviously start off with learning and then afterwards becoming like the expert, become the guy. And then make tutorials, make videos, make informational things, make animations, you know, make t-shirts, sell mugs, branded, just, just brands, honestly. So just being able to appeal to that brand and that consumer market, super cool, super important. Thinking about Borderlands, it already has 400 guys. Also, honestly, I don't know why, but people don't really like watching, like, Borderlands videos, I've noticed. Like, the top people for Borderlands games, they don't get, like, obviously they get a lot of views, but, like, you know, there's nothing reaching over a million. Maybe it's because the Borderlands franchise is small, which I don't think is true, but maybe just because it's smaller. Uh, also, I just realized we have amnesia, so this sucks. That hit me? Okay. Yeah, sure. Let's let's go with that. Alright. Yeah. So, like, you, have, you also have to find something that people want to watch. Not just something that people can watch, but something people want to watch. So, I guess, range down. That sucks, but whatever. It's fair. See, I don't know. I'm just always considering new games that I can take over. I, I love being variety because I personally have a really short attention span, you know? I can only play a game for like four hours until I think, okay, I'm bored, I wanna play something else now. You know? Like when I'm playing video games with the boys back in my day, like Rocket League, I'd play it for 10 matches, then I say, okay, whatever, you know, I, 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 feel, I feel like I'm done with Rocket League for now, or Dead by Daylight. I can only play like three matches at a time until I get bored, you know? This is repetitive. Dead by Daylight, it's a fun game, you know, obviously has some nice redeeming qualities. I don't think I could ever put 10,000 hours into it. It's just, it, it's too repetitive for me. Not enough replayability, you know? Not my, not my style of replayability. Also, honestly, just heck this. This isn't going to do much, but it should take out one of the boys, right? Yeah, cool. That's good. I know I have piercing shots, but honestly, our damage is so low at this point. I feel so weak. And, you know, we only have one and a half red hearts left. Make that two and a half. So, I don't know. What, what is going to be my 10,000 hour game? What, what am I willing to put 10,000 hours into? Obviously, it could be tutorials. You know, maybe I'll learn guitar. What? I... If you run out of money... If you run out of money, you die? Okay, well, I guess that ends the conversation pretty early. All right, well, there you go. 53-minute episode doing a challenge. This is another difficult challenge. These, uh, these red challenges are really stepping up the game. Interesting. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed my, my rant of 10,000 hours. Maybe I'll make a TED Talk one day. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.